Welcome, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey, the podcast. This is episode four. Today, we're going to talk about how to run a successful horror adventure or campaign. Yes. Um, so uh, first, let's talk about, before we, you, before we even think about doing a horror uh, adventure of any sort, uh, let's talk about session zero. Let's talk about what you need to do before, you're, before you actually play this. Play right. Anything. Oh boy, this is really important. Um, we've, we've done a whole episode on section zero that you should check out. But um, if you, in case you didn't see that, the idea of session zero is that before you start any campaign, right? Session one's where you get together and you make all the characters and everything. Session zero is where you get together with your players and you talk about what you want the game to be about and, and your expectations. I, I think the... Uh, more games are ruined by a lack of communication than anything else. So it's important for any game, but it is vital for a horror game because horror by its very nature is designed to, at some level, upset people, right? To some extent. Um, and it's really important that you are upfront with all your players about what level of horror they want, what things they want to talk about and what things they don't want to talk about. Um, so, you know, some people don't want to tell horror stories that involve children. Some people don't want to tell horror stories that involve any sort of sexual horror. Some people don't like body horror. And there are all sorts of different types of technique, once, of types of horror, once even you get past what they don't want, you can talk about what they do want. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, I also think a horror game could benefit by the use of the X card, which is something I mentioned before. So the idea is that you give every player a, um, a playing card or a magic card or, or something, you know, anything. <laughs> um, and during the game, at any time, they feel uncomfortable you know, as, a, as, a, as a person. Not as, a, not as a character, but as, a, as a, the player feels really uncomfortable and doesn't want to play the scene anymore, they can just hold up their X, their X card. And, and then you as the, the game master can know that this has gone too far for whatever reason, the player doesn't want to do this, and you can end the scene as quickly as possible, and uh, then you can move on to another scene, or you can pause the game and talk about the player, you know, talk to the player one-on-one, -on -one. Um, it just lets you, it's a non-verbal way to say, this is too much, let's stop this. And I think that's terribly important in a horror game because like I said, it's designed to be uncomfortable. Yeah, horror tends to be, a, I, I want game masters to understand that horror uh, is a term that can mean different things to different people. Uh, there's a, a famous story that came out of a, a, a gaming con in, in Britain where uh, uh, people walked out of a game session because there was a, a rape scene in, in, in the game. And um, uh, it, was, it was so traumatizing for, for the players that they kicked out the game master. He was, he's been banned forever from wow. playing in that convention. Yeah, it was, it was bad. And, um, and uh, there was, uh, it was interesting. I was reading some of the comments and uh, some people say, oh, you know, they were playing a, a horror campaign. What did they expect? And I, that, stuff like that kind of annoys me because what, what is horrible to you may not be hor same horrible for someone else. And, right. Uh, that's, yeah. It, it's really, it's really important that, um, that you discuss with your players or discuss with your players exactly what your, what, what themes you might be playing with, what, what, what type of horror, which, right. uh, which is great. We could, that's a, a great segue to talk about what different types of horror there is out there that, that people can play. Sure, sure. Um, so every October, I run a, a horror game. And, uh, you know, around about September or something, I, um, I, I get together with all my players. And I said, well, what do you what do you want to play this year? What kind of horror do you want to play? And the, the, the types of horror I see them are um, survivalist horror. That's where you know, the, the, the object is to stay alive. Something is trying to kill you. It's kind of an action-oriented horror. It's uh, the, the classic example is the zombies. Right? Zombies are usually survival horror. 
Uh, the next kind of horror is kind of an existential horror. It's all kind of mental and madness and paranoia. And the uh, uh, the good a good example there is Call of Cthulhu, right? So that's all uh, horrors from outside space and time that are going to warp your mind. Uh, then there's kind of there's kind of a spooky, wicked horror, uh, which while still horrible, isn't as intense. It's kind of uh, kind of a haunted house story. You know, there's something terrible going on, but uh, the, it might end up being, you know, um, a ghost whose heart is broken or, or, or something. It, it's a more of a tragedy instead of a, instead of a gore fest. Um, it's like Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. That would be kind of a spooky, wicked story. Uh, then there's, of course, this horror comedy. Right, you know, so you can mix the two. The perfect example is Ghostbusters, where who's, you know, the hor the horrific elements in Ghostbusters are pretty horrific. Mm. They're just kind of lightened with the tune, that the the tone. Um, and then, and then you've got sort of religious horror, which is horror based on, usually, you know, kind of a judo Christian, um, uh, religion. So it's all about demons and hell and satan and salvation and there's all sorts of movies um <clears throat> of this type i'm sure you've seen some <laughs> mm. um so i haven't got a chance to play many of that because a lot of my players that's kind of a an uncomfortable area but i've played all the i've run i've run all the rest so can you think of any others uh other types Oof. you know it's funny um uh, I think I was talking about this before with you uh, outside of this, but uh, but like I, I watched so many horror movies um, growing up, but yet I haven't run too many um, like horror adventures or horror one shots or anything like that and for my camp, for my stuff because um, I just haven't found the right players for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, mm -hmm. the players I come across growing up were usually just me, both fantasy players, um, uh, superheroes, uh, or or, or um, cyberpunk, uh, but not couldn't find too many to do horror um so uh, although um i haven't done horror per se uh, i'm pretty good at causing anxiety <laughs> among my players yeah um, uh so so let me just share some quick tips for uh, game masters that are looking to create a to build up excitement um or to uh, create suspense in your campaign uh one major thing i use is um I, I call it misinformation or, mm -hmm. or lack of information um, is like, I always feel they should never tell players everything, you know, um, keeping it in the dark as much as they can. Um, uh, I've, I've noticed personally in my personal experience, uh, I'll try not to get too much into it, but uh, there's been <laughs> times where things are, uh, have been really chaotic. And I've noticed that most times when, when people freak out a lot, it's because they don't know what's going on. Um, sure. uh, um, whenever there's a, a crime scene or something like that that happens, um, uh, or there's you know anything like that, uh, it, I, I noticed that people tend to freak out what they don't know. Uh, I mean, you can look at any, you can look at from 9/11 to even today's uh, COVID-19 scenarios where how you can see how how the lack of information has caused people to react in certain ways. Um, so I, with my players, I, I try to give them very little to work on. Um, you know, if they're in a, in a spot where things are suddenly like the place is burning down around them or um, there's a, um, or so people are just randomly getting murdered and it seems like they're next. Um, <laughs> little things like that, I, I, and they don't know why. I try to keep in the dark as much as I can until the end of the game. So some game masters, uh, I've, I've seen use props at times when they're trying to describe something a little bit more, uh, something a little bit more, uh, make it more edgy in some ways. Which is which is fine. I mean, sometimes if 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 that's what you have and you think that'll cause uh, that'll create uh, more tension, I would say go ahead with that. Um, if you have if you describing a dark alley, um, for example, uh, they may you, if you think you have an image or something that may rattle the cages, like something like you may have seen a, a crime scene, a picture of it in New York. Go ahead. Um, you know, if we do that, um, another thing I would recommend using is music. You know, if you haven't have a good soundtrack of a uh, of different from different you know, horror movies and so forth, you know, go ahead and use that. I, music really helps with the mood. Um, sure, there are a lot of good soundtracks out there. Yeah, 
And and if you and if you don't have any of these props or music, um, my recommendation is just use do do your best to explain everything. We're using all five senses, you know, you know, um, you know, talk about what what the place like it, like, like what taste suddenly f- fills in your mouth when you're in that area. Uh, what what do they hear? You know, uh, what do they see or don't see? You know, um, uh, you know, does do they feel chills all of a sudden? Um, you know, you know, uh, those tend to work very well. Yeah. And uh, yeah. W- one one vivid technique I use all. I'm sorry. Vivid descriptions, yes, are are um, um, important. Um, but uh, another technique I use, I I I use a like a time limit scenario. Like for example, like uh, like all right, guess what, everyone, you're you're all poisoned. You have <laughs> one hour in real time to solve this. You know, and go ahead and that causes enough tension and anxiety for your players to try to scramble and do something before it's too late. Uh, I actually have like hourglasses, like plastic yeah. hourglasses, nice. some are a minute long, some are two minutes. And um, if I, if I'll give them like a scenario, like, all right, there's a dead body on the floor. You have two minutes to solve it before the cops are there. What do you do? <laughs> That's good. That's good. You know, you know and it's, 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 uh, those types of things I've noticed works really well, at least on my, my, uh, camp, my, uh, my adventures. Sure. No, oh, those are good. Those are good techniques. I like those. Yeah. Um, I like what you said about uh, the unknown. I think it's uh, very important. You know, people are afraid of the unknown. And so uh, players like a good mystery. Um, and depending on the type of game you're playing, if, if you're playing, a, you know, a, a madness scenario, then you can really ramp that up and you, you, you can really um, mess with their, uh, their sense of reality. I, uh, I was playing a Call of Cthulhu game and the character was walking through a dark tunnel. It was completely dark. They couldn't see anything. And they were just tapping on the floor with a walking stick to see what was in front of them. And then suddenly I said, you don't feel anything with your staff when you're tapping ahead. And he says, oh goodness, I back up. I tapped to my side. So you don't feel anything there either. He says, I tapped to my other side. I said, you don't feel anything. He got this look on his face and I said, he said, I tap behind me. He said, you don't feel anything there either. <laughs> <He's> like, ah! <laughs> so, you know, just the, the, the little buildup of crazy things. Um, and uh, particularly when, you know, it's, it's tricky to do, but if you, can, if you can build up a sense of madness and make the players question their reality, or at least the player character. Yeah. Um, so you, you want things to feel mysterious and sometimes illogical, but not silly or random. You, you really want to try to try to impose kind of a dream logic. You know, you, you know mm. how things don't make sense in a dream and yet yeah. it feels like they do. Like you feel like there's a logic behind it. You just can't figure out what that is. If you can, if you can pull that off. That's uh, you know that's really amazing you know you so you yeah. want to you want to kind of create a motif to the madness but not tell anybody what it is and so when they notice things you know um, and you, you do little things to mess with their minds you know there are shadows don't uh, don't immediately move as fast as they do and uh, echoes echoes echo the wrong words. <laughs> <laughs> little little things like that that kind of that kind of creep them out. Um, so again, you know, as we were saying, there are vivid vivid descriptions. This is horror. Really, um, really depends on your descriptions. You want to you want to uh, you know, practice learning how to describe things, and you want to use all the senses there. Uh, but in the scenarios too. Um, one of the things that you know people find frightening is powerlessness and so if you can take away some power from the player characters you can you can upset them now this is something again that you have to be careful with this is why you need to talk about this sort of stuff in session zero because people role play um to a large extent for power fantasies, right? So they want to be able to, they want to be able to accomplish things, but it can be horrific when they can't. 
the the the, yes. the evil cannot be beaten. It can be yeah. negated. Um, you know, they they feel helpless. That that can really be horrific. Um, yeah. And sometimes a real subtle touch is nice. Implication. Right? You know, they don't see something horrible. They see something that implies something horrible. You know, I, I had, um, you know, I, I, I had a character, they were playing a Call of Cthulhu game in uh, the British Raj down in India. And uh, they, they came across this, uh, this door, this gigantic, you know, door bloomed over them. And it was all built out of ivy, ivory. And then they started, they were looking at it. And then one of them said, you know, we started thinking about how many, you know, dead elephants that took. And suddenly, you kind of conjure up this huge <laughs> pile. And I'm like, wait a minute, that must have been a mountain of carcasses just to build this door. So you, you, can, you can imply horrible things without actually saying them. If, you know, the horror that the players create in their own minds is better than anything you can do. So if you can kind of mm. get them to do the work for you. So there are a ton of horror role-playing games um, to fit almost any type of horror you want. Um, so I already mentioned for survivalist horror, if you got things like All Flesh Must Be Eaten. Um, you can even, you know, you have things like Ravenloft for D&D. That would be a lot of survivalist horror because you're fighting against the monsters. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's Chill which is um, a modern, modern day investigator horror. So it's, it's like Call of Cthulhu, but with more traditional horror. So vampires and ghosts and werewolves and things like that. Um, there's the World of Darkness, those the classic World of Darkness and the New World of Darkness. Um, specifically the vampire game and the wraith game. Um, and I think the new iteration is called Geist, and and those can be those can be several different types of horror. The way you want it, depending on how you want to take it, uh, that can be survivalist, or it can be uh, it can be more uh, existential. You know, um, you know, it can be really some of it can be really kind of graphic body horror, which really freaks out a lot of people and maybe too far, depending on uh, your players. And for existential horror, of course, you know, the big one is Call Cthulhu, but there are other ones. There's Trail of Cthulhu, um, which is really kind of the same setting, it's the same idea. It's just got a, um, a, different, a different system. You know, it, it's more narrative. It's uh, the gumshoe system, if, if you like that sort of thing. Um, then there's... Um, you know, there's even more extreme versions of that. There's the there's a there's a game, there, uh, the King in Yellow. It's all about just the King in Yellow, and, and you know involves three different time periods and alternate realities and lots of madness. So um, one of the most uncomfortable games I've seen is uh, Little Fears, where you play children um, being. Uh, uh, confronting your childhood nightmares, the boogeyman, and uh, they're they're all real, and they come from a closet space, and they're really terrible. And uh, it can be a very horrific game because it's got a, a you know a big element of powerlessness in it because you're children, and some of the some of the uh, the demons are really awful. <laughs> there's a you know there's there's a good amount of child abuse in the game um so it might mm -hmm. be too far in fact it's one of the ones that i've only run once and then one of my players said no i don't want to do that ever again so <laughs> there you go um but for um there's there's science fiction horror there's the uh the new aliens game uh which mm -hmm. is definitely survivalist horror creeping around spaceships with the xenomorphs going after you that the, the the first two, the first movie was a straight art horror movie. Excellent, excellent horror movie. Um, for religious horror, there's Cult, uh, K-U-L-K, uh, T, K-U-L-T, 
uh, which is a modern Gnostic horror. So all of reality is a, a, a prison illusion created by the demiurge, and it just, just falls down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so there are lots of different things to choose from, um, depending on the type of horror you want. So um, I think the important thing when choosing a game and choosing a system is if, if you're gonna run it, one, make sure you're comfortable with the setting because um, the last thing you want to do is look up rules during the game. <laughs> Never really a good idea, but definitely not in a horror game because it's all so much about your mood. You don't want to break the mood by looking something up. Uh, you want a set of rules that enforces the theme. That, you know, you don't want to fight the system um, when you're telling the story. So, I mean, you don't want to use... You don't want to use D&D to tell us kind of a, a survivalist zombie game because once you're past second level, zombies, big deal. <laughs> you know? I, uh, and so, I mean, if a zombie crashes through the wall and bites you in the arm, that's supposed to be a terrible thing. But if you've got 30 hit points, <laughs> you know, uh, you don't care. So, I mean, you can make it work, but you shouldn't have to fight the system. So you should pick a system that reinforces what you're looking for. Um, and, um, you know, along those lines, maybe you want a system with a fear mechanic, you know, um, like Call Cthulhu has its uh, sanity, um, sanity rules, your character actually mechanically goes insane. Um, you know, a lot of other games, um, have the oh my god I've been shot rule <laughs> which means um, if your character takes any sort of traumatic uh, wounds you know they they have to make a willpower roll to keep acting you know to do something else because normal people don't just get up and run away after they've been shot they lie there and say oh my god I've been shot <laughs> and imagine how much worse it is when you know oh my god I've been bitten by a hellhound. Even if it doesn't do you a lot of damage, it's, it's psychologically scarring. Um, so you may want something like that, and you may want to look into that. Uh, hmm. So okay. you, you don't, you've never run a horror game, you said. Uh, not, not, I run like, like some scenarios that are maybe considered horror, but not like a, a horror theme throughout type of thing um uh, sometimes uh again again i i i when i put my players and if i know them well enough i kind of know what buttons to press when it comes to like what would get them excited or make them sure. anxious so i may give them like certain scenarios like uh you're fighting uh you're in a in a in a room and there's a mirror there and your evil self comes out and that that, that you know it's trying to strangle you and they uh, uh i've noticed a scenario like that may may be great for a play. Like, oh my gosh, that's horrifying! I, I, I got what? What do I do to stop it? And yeah, um, you know. So, but nothing, nothing uh, hardcore. I would say um, beyond the supernatural, maybe the closest thing I played from the Palladian system. Um, I bought the books due to um, when I became fascinated with riffs, and um, there's been a few times where we played it. Um, have a lot of people uh, game master it, and uh, they, um, they've uh, those, those are fun. They weren't so bad. Um, but I, 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 I agree with you very much about trying to use D&D, Pathfinder, or anything like that in a horror scenario. It's really hard because the higher level you go, the harder it is for them to be um, uh, brought down by something as simple as a zombie. You know, um, uh, uh, all flesh must be eaten. Zombies are horrible. Zombies yeah. in D&D, eh, not so much. It goes back to what I was oh, saying um, about power and Something I want to... Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. One more thing I wanted to say about um, monsters. Um, something that I've seen other people re do really good at, sometimes I do it as well, um, is the re uh, reinvention of a monster. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to give an example, if you look at classic horror movies compared to their um, uh, remakes, like uh, uh, Body Snatchers, you know, the black and white, you compare it to the 70s version, uh it's wow <laughs> uh the thing from outer space to john carpenter is the thing um uh, the, the thing by john carpenter is, is a pretty horrifying movie the idea is that you can't trust anybody um and if you if someone disappears for a little bit you don't know like that 
second they were gone, they might have been uh, eaten up and taken over by uh, by this alien creature. Um, so I, I bring that up just to say that if you, let's say, use a vampire, um, maybe change that around somewhat so it's not exactly the same type of creature. Because I'll, I'll be honest, if, if you use, if I'm, in a, I'm playing Ravenloft, you say, hey, there's a vampire. I'm like, oh, okay, I got to kill it. I know what, I know its weaknesses. I know what I got to do. You right. know? But if you see something like, um, this thing like 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 this goo coming from the window coming down to the floor towards you i'm like oh what, what the heck is that i don't know what this is <laughs> you know like how do i defeat it do i try stabbing it do i put it on a fire do i just run away what do i do um so i it's i think that's important to know uh, to 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 know as well if, if you're if you're, uh, stay away from tropes uh try to be as creative as possible with your monsters as well yeah yeah that's good advice that's good advice um you know, because you know, there's two levels to um, to a horror game. Of course, there there's really two people you're trying to scare. There's there's the players, and then there's their characters. And um, yeah, w with a uh, with a classic monster, you're really only going to scare the the, the characters. Uh, the players have seen it all before. It's 2020. We all know. Um, the werewolves and the vampires so you're gonna kind of mix that up a little bit um yeah i think that's why i like the idea of call of Duty so much even though it's there's been many role-playing games and, and 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 so forth is that you don't really see i mean yeah i don't know what Cthulhu looks like but you don't really deal with Cthulhu directly you don't know there's a lot of unknowns about there and every game master um has a different take on the mythos you know yeah. and i find that very fascinating yeah yeah uh the mythos is fantastic because um it's actually part of the mythos that nobody understands the mythos <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it gives you perfect license to change everything you know oh, that's not how that works how do you know how it works you don't know how it works hmm. and uh, you know the only people who think they know how it works are cackling wizards and they're mad so <laughs> um all right excellent horror can be a lot of fun but it can it's it's a little dangerous it's a little uncomfortable that's that's the whole point excellent um uh thank you everyone for for listening to our our uh, advice i uh, hope it benefits you in some way um and uh yeah stay tuned for the next episode okay all right we're going we're we're yeah. dead, hey, we're dead. <laughs> so welcome everyone <laughs> This sorry. is our latest episode. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Uh... <laughs>